Hey, Scott from MyGrowthRings.com here. Here, once again, is my garage shop, and uh, this is our midweek episode of Stumped Q&A. This is the follow-up to the weekend video, which happened to be on the 25-hour uh, maintenance of the ShopSmith Mark V headstock. Um, there was a little bit of confusion about that. I think that was my fault. I don't think I was terribly clear about how that video was only about the maintenance you do at the 25-hour runtime point. Several people had comments about other types of maintenance that might need to be done. Oh yeah, there's lots of other maintenance that might need to be done. You might need to replace belts, uh, ball bearings. There's even two other spots inside that headstock that might occasionally need lubrication. I didn't talk about those. Um, I'll, I'll touch on those briefly today, but we're going to do other videos about other stages of maintenance and maybe your machine needs it. In fact, there was a comment. Let me see if I can, I have some notes here. Um, Caleb said that his machine hasn't had any maintenance in 50 years. So Caleb, you've got several places that need to be lubricated. But let's start at the top of my list here. William said that his manual says to use 10W30 motor oil. Well, it really depends upon which ShopSmith manual you've got. I mean, that uh, that machine's been around a long time, and there have been many manuals. Uh, the most important thing being it should be a 10-weight motor oil that is non-detergent. So the 10W, that's 10-weight. 10 so you're good there as long as it's non-detergent. And guess what? I recommend this sewing machine oil. It's a 10-weight non-detergent oil. Okay, so um, you're safe with this. There were some folks that were concerned about that. No, it's perfectly fine. A uh, little backstory on me. For five years, I was a full-time clockmaker. I was a horologist. And there was a famous horologist back in the 18th century who said to Napoleon, Napoleon who was looking for timepieces that were accurate so that he could coordinate his battles, this uh, horologist said, give me the perfect oil and I'll give you the perfect watch. Lubrication's a big deal, and using the right oil is critical for the success of this machine. Also, using the right amount. You know, I, I made some flippant response or comment about how it's okay if I put too much. Now there's actually a point. If I put way too much, um, not only is it gonna be thrown off of the parts as they move, but that oil, as it exits, actually pulls oil out with it. So there's sort of a capillary action that takes place. So, so adding too much oil to something ultimately has the same effect of not adding enough oil. It needs to be just right. And what is just right? Basically, what we're doing is we're creating a fluid or a liquid bearing. We want those parts to be floating on oil. And uh, so right amount, just a couple drops and you're good to go every 25 hours. Um, let's see, uh, Kurt said, is it possible to remount the headstock with those locking wedges uh, misaligned? The, the wedges that are a part of the headstock lock right here. You know, I, I did screw that up and I took it off. Um, I did a little editing and I refilmed that part. When I took it off initially, I screwed it up, had it misaligned, but no, you can't. Uh, basically imagine a, a cylinder that has a portion of it cut away, and it can only go on the tube if it's properly aligned. I just made more work for myself having to get those two back in sync with one another, but uh, not the end of the world, but no, it won't go on if it's misaligned. Um, Andy said that the headstock's heavy. Yes, it is. It's at least 65 pounds, and if you have one of the very early models that was sand cast, I believe that they can be up to 75 pounds, crazy heavy. So he mentioned that um, he no longer pulls the headstock off to, uh, uh, to do most of maintenance. He does that maintenance in the vertical position, in the drill press position. And actually, that's smart. If you can lift into the drill press position, uh, you can do all the things that I talked about, the lubricating of the motor and uh, of the uh, speed control can all be done within the vertical position, which actually also goes to Chad's comment what about people who've taken their Mark V and mounted it permanently on the wall as a drill press? Some people have done that. It's an excellent drill press. And uh, as their shops have grown and they've added additional tools, um, there's still a place for the Mark V. They just mount it on the wall. Um, yeah, you can do that lubrication. Basically, what you're going to do there is you're going to lift up the, uh, the uh, V-belt cover 
and, and clamp it in place. Um, if you do have the ability, if it's just a standalone uh, drill press, just a Mark V, you can stand it up, you can remove the tie bar at the top and remove the belt cover. But if you can't do those things, just lift the, the belt cover up, put a spring clamp on it, and uh, then you can change the, the V-belt, you can add the lubrication to it, all that stuff can be done from there. Um, I will shoot another video specifically for those really early Shopsmith Mark Vs, the ones that don't have the access hole in the back, because there's a few tricks and tips that I can give you that would take up way too much time for this video, and they don't apply to everybody, but we're going to do that. I promise you that. Um, Gregory said he's unclear about the uh, maintenance of the pork chop. That's the quadrant. That's the part of the speed control that might need lubricating, but that I did not talk about. Um, in the factory, they put a, a touch of grease on it, but it, there's always been this internal struggle of, you know, you put grease or oil on an open part and it's going to attract sawdust. And in the end, is that better or worse than leaving it bare? So my solution for that is, uh, so that's the product I use. Um, it, it is a spray lubricant. You gotta be careful with this. You don't wanna put it on too many places. And um, it contains uh, PTFE, poly, uh, polytetrafluoroethylene, which is a fancy way of uh, basically the chemical name for Teflon. And so uh, it, what's fascinating about that is Teflon doesn't stick to stuff. So Teflon has to basically be in a binder in order to stick. And so um, you spray this on, turn, turn your speed control, basically a worm gear, and uh, get that on the quadrant. And uh, for me, I like that because it dries, uh, it dries dry <laughs> and isn't going to attract dust. But you do want to be careful that you don't get this anywhere like on your table because that will transfer onto your wooden parts and then that'll affect gluing and finishing and so on. But I, I love this stuff. And so I, I recommend it. Um, let's see. Uh, I'm sorry. I got lost there. Yeah, da Damon had a very similar question. He said, aren't there more than two spots? Yes, there's two more spots <laughs> that might need lubrication. The other spot is behind this uh, the speed dial itself. There's a little leaf spring that pushes against the speed dial and keeps it from, from, uh, from drifting due to vibration. And that rubs against the back of this dial. And um, on the assembly line at Shopsmith for years, they, they just put a little dab of beeswax on it. I don't, even, I don't even know what they put on it today. But for the same reason I don't do that, um, I, I use that spray. Uh, let's see. Uh, Caleb said, um, could you address the different lubes? Yeah, okay. Um, and again, Caleb says he's done no maintenance at all. So that's why I have a few things laid out here. Uh, on the weigh tubes and the tables, I use Johnson's Pace Wax. Um, in a pinch on the weigh tubes, I will use Bow Shield T9. Uh, we talked about this for the jointer. I'll use that on the jointer sometimes as well. Um, I, I used to use um, Top Coat, and this, this product is so old, this can, um, over four years ago, they changed the name and the branding to Glide Coat, still, still made by Bostick or a company owned by Bostick, um, but Glide Coat. It, it is a spray wax, and you can put that on your way tubes, you can put it on your tables. Um, when and where I use that, I don't like it as well as paste wax. I don't find that it lasts as long, even though all the advertising on it will tell you that it lasts longer than paste wax. I'm not sure whose paste wax they compared it to, but what it does do is it puts a quick coat on things. So if I don't have time and I'm noticing that, gosh, you know, things are just not moving as smoothly as I'd like them to, I'll give them a quick spray of, of top coat, let it cure for just a minute or two and buff it, and then I'm good to go. It also is really kind of cloudy. So, you know, the, I don't like it, but it's okay. And it's designed for that purpose. It's designed to make your cast iron and, and, and uh, you know, <laughs> aluminum tables move smooth, smoothly. So I do use it and would recommend it for that. 
Um, Scott A. asked if there was any tricks for belt removal. Well, I showed how to move the V-belt, how to remove the V-belt. The Poly V and the Gilmer belt, there's a lot of tricks for that, and we're not doing that in this video. But uh, I'm not sure if it was him or somebody else. Somebody was talking about having their, their V-belt basically had gotten caught up in the, uh, in the sheaves. That usually means it's done. You got to cut the belt. Um, to, or you might as well cut the belt to get it all out of there. And that happens when that belt is so worn that uh, things are getting real slack and, and you just got problems. So just cut the belt off, start over, and you can follow those instructions I showed you for putting the belt in place. Uh, Dave said, since you broke the quill, will you upgrade? And I, in the comments, I said, well, I didn't break the quill. I broke the quill handle. And I said I, I was considering it, and, and then I did. I, I, if you look in the um, community tab on, the, um, on my uh, channel page, I posted a picture of the quill handles that I've purchased. So I've purchased a set of two, uh, a one arm, which is really long, and a three arm kind of traditional uh, drill press type handle that's a quick release that can go off and on and mount in, in, in a whole bunch of different positions. I think 19 positions on either side of the headstock. So you better believe we're going to take a look at that when that arrives in a couple weeks. So looking forward to that. Um, small town machine shop, by the way, I do watch your channel and uh, would encourage others to do the same. Um, are the bearings common sizes or are they proprietary? Yeah, bearings are all common sizes. You can buy these bearings on on the free market. <laughs> and uh, so if you want to go cheap, you can buy cheap Chinese bearings. If you want high quality bearings, you can do it and you won't regret that. Um, then let's see, I got just uh, one more, two more lubricants here. We, we've got graphite, which we used last week on the, uh, on the headstock lock. Uh, there are some spots if you happen to have a Shopsmith bandsaw, there are some spots on the bandsaw if you don't have the ball bearing upgrade that you use graphite. There's also uh, grease that gets used on the bandsaw, and there's a few other tools that have miscellaneous. You know, if you got the jigsaw, you got to add oil to the oil bath and so on. But for the Mark V itself, I use all of these. And then you saw me on the jointer use this just as a trial. Um, I am still... Jury's still out on this. Fine Woodworking loved it. Uh, it's really oily. I don't like the feel of this. Uh, but if I were to be, say, putting this in storage for several months, maybe maybe in a shed or something like that, um, I like this. It does have that kind of WD-40 sort of feel to it, but it doesn't seem to have all the, um, the propellants in it or the... Uh, Solvents, that's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Somebody made a comment about how they were glad I left in my errors. Oh, oh, do I leave in my errors. Anyway, I think that that's, uh, that's all I wanted to say about this one. Um, <laughs> thanks again for watching and uh, tune in next, this weekend for even more. Make it a great week.